I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast, everybody. I'm Francis Ellis, as ever, joined by my dear co-host and friend, Giulio Gallarati. G, how are you today? What's going on, man? Well, I'm excited, and I'll tell you why. We have... A, a dazzling guest today. It is the magnificent, the talented, the hysterical Natasha Legero. How are you, Natasha? Thank you for joining Hi. us. So glad to be here on the Bro Bible with two men who don't look like bros. I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would argue that we're really, you know, working to to save the bro title here. I guess we're we're a new era of bro. Uh, I like we're that. yeah. Um, <laughs> Natasha, you know, ha, has been on, on so many, your, your Wikipedia page is, is endless. Um, by the way, that's not exactly a good thing I'm realizing. <laughs> like the other day I was like, I have so many more credits than Meryl Streep because like <laughs> people like Meryl Streep, they're in like two great movies a year. Whereas like, I'm in like 30 things a month trying to like <laughs> claw my way stuff but yes i'm glad that there is a large amount of things that i've been cast in <laughs> yeah it's funny it's funny that you say that because i have just brief like memories of seeing you in things like an episode of girls i remember you were in like a coffee shop um was it me no <laughs> were you never in girls no that's great this is how many things you've been in that you're not even actually in them or maybe I was, you know what, who knows? I've smoked a lot of pot since that show was canceled, so. <laughs> um, I, I do know you from the roasts, uh, which you were so brilliant. I remember the, the victory lap, you ran around the podium, <laughs> uh, which I always thought was so baller. Um, Wait, wasn't that, I forget who that was for. I think I was making fun of Ludacris, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, was it the Bieber roast? Yeah, that was the Bieber roast, but yeah. I think Ludacris had done that, so I kind of copied him. I mean, that's what's fun, fun about those roasts. You're like so prepared that when like something can happen, you're, sometimes you can be so prepared that then all that happens is like freedom after that. That's mm -hmm. why like, that's a big thing you know, in terms of when people ask for advice, it's like being prepared is kind of everything because from there, then you can start the freedom, you know? Well, Absolutely. I, I want to ask you about that because in, in preparing so much for such a big event, I mean, I think that's probably in my mind, I guess, short of the Trump roast, the biggest star that they've probably roasted. That was to me the, the, the most eyeballs probably that they You think had. Trump's a bigger star than Bieber? <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, now in hindsight- like, bro. <laughs> right, like, they, got him, they got him early. Yeah, looking back, you'd have to say like, what a crazy thing that they got to roast the, the you know, the vilified president. But uh, n no, I, I, I think, um, to prepare so much, right? And then if you do verge away from what you've prepared, can you find yourself in like an unknown place? And does that, I like I would get nervous. Yeah, it's, it's more like the idea that there can be no freedom without form. So it's like, if you have all of the things in place, then at least you always have that to fall back on. Mm -hmm. Then you can just sort of like fly to wherever you need to go. I mean, that's totally. obviously in an ideal situation. But I do remember the first time I did stand up on TV or the first time I did The Tonight Show, Jay Leno came in and he was like, okay, you know, it's just, just stand out. He took me to the stage before the show started. He's like, just pretend like you're at a club, you know? And I was so nervous, but I had over and over and over rehearsed and I was so worried it was gonna come out. You know, but I think as soon as the crowd started, you know, responding, and I think Jay really helped with that by telling them it was my first time, then I was able to just sort of like feel very free. And I think that is, you know, that's something you forget in comedy. It's not just like the lines and it's not just, you know, the jokes and it's, 
you know, it's, it, or the movements or the act outs. It's like also feeling funny and being funny. And how do you, how do you inhabit that? And that can be really hard, you know? Like, I remember when I first started, Bobby Lee told me like, try to be funny before you start talking. And I thought that was such good advice because you come up to the stage and now whenever I come up to the stage, I'm like really short. So I always like do something with the mic and you know, it's just like a little, like just to get you in that zone of like, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist out, you know, it's, it's just energy really. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think that that applies to all, you know, art forms. And it, cause like, if you look at Picasso, even like his early arts were like very, basic he cl studied a classical technique and once you master that then you can start to take the liberties it's hard to just exactly. take the liberty. he was a you know picasso was a figure drawer i think you know he just was like exactly doing figures and then right. when he mastered that that's when he was able to like fuck the art form up and like you know totally create something new and absolutely uh, i'm glad that you know about that julia <laughs> yeah, thank you thank you yeah, it's been a great I, discussion uh, that was cool. That you guys Natasha, wait, yes. is this is that your real background behind you, or is that like a Zoom background? That's my house. It's very cool. I uh, I wallpapered. You know, I I I I did some game shows and saved up and wall uh, <laughs> paid for wallpaper. So uh, <laughs> I I I actually I'm not just saying this. I love that wallpaper, and I like the rhinoceri bookends. <laughs> and it, it, it has somewhat of like a, a south, I don't know, like a, I want to, I want to order a lovely cocktail, you know, but I don't mean that it, it, I, it just makes me feel like I can wear white linen pants there. You know, I think that especially now we want to make our environments as, as, you know, comfortable and fun as possible. So if you can, you know, even if it's just rearranging a room or something I've found right now is kind of helping me. Nice. Totally. Awesome. So now, Natasha, I know that you are a, a young mother. I don't know if I'm saying, I mean, by, I mean like you have a young I'm child. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Am I saying that right? I don't know. Whatever. whatever. I mean, you can always call me young, but I did uh, freeze my eggs at 37 and then I had my baby at 42. So, you know. Oh, very good. I guess very that's good. not you know, it's, it's all relative, but, uh, <laughs> yes, I am a mother. I love being a mother. I'm a young mother. My child is a young child. And, uh, you know, I, I think that this pandemic, I've been so grateful to her because there is just this like little ball of positive energy. There's just this like, you know, little, thing that doesn't know what Trump is. And, y you know, all she <laughs> wants to do is like, you know, very innocent things. And, and I, I just, when I get stressed, I'm like, well, at least there's always this, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Until like, she starts to hate me, you know, whenever that happens. <laughs> I have like a decade, right? Oh yeah, at least, I think. I, I um, my girlfriend works at Salesforce and as part of their healthcare, they actually provide for all the female employees the ability to freeze their eggs, wow. which I know can be an, exp I think it can be an expensive process. Definitely um, expensive. I saved up for three years to be able to do it. And it's, you know, I think now it might be even more, but I think it was like $10,000. And the thing that wasn't clear to me is that's per round. So I thought when I got like eight eggs, I was going to have eight babies in the freezer. And I was like, well, I don't even know if I want one. So that's plenty. But, you know, then they like defrost them, mix them with my husband's sperm. Some of them die. They implanted one. It died. So then I, this was the only one I had. So I guess I don't want more than one kid. But if you do want more than one kid, my advice to all those bros out there is uh, to make sure that you know, have the woman do as many rounds as you can afford. Wow. Wow. That's that was very good. a lot, Francis. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. This well, can I, I, okay, so, so hold on. I, I <laughs> are, did you, and I, if this is too personal, forgive me. And no, just, I don't care. So the eight eggs, right? That's like eight months and each month you go and you, you no. freeze? No, it's like you, you, you shoot your body up with, steroids and they try to recreate this like hyper you know egg 
situation and then they extract them. But, you know, then they're getting frozen without being putting the sperm in yet because I didn't know who my partner was. Ideally, you would know who your partner was. They would make the embryos, then freeze them. They have a little bit better chance. But for all those girls out there, like for your girlfriend, <laughs> does she want to make them with you or does she want to freeze her own? That's the real question. <laughs> we, we haven't gotten that far, no. honestly. I mean, right. I'm sure there's someone better out there for her. So. Well, I also think a lot of people are like, well, this world is so crazy. Do I really want to bring a kid into the world? And all I can say is we need a future generation. Um, these kids are going to be our environmental scientists. They're going to be the people, hopefully, who save us from this terrible world we've inherited. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's so important, if, if you can, you know. I, I Obviously, global warming is very sad. And um, anyway, do you guys have some more comedy questions? <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, let me say, first and foremost, uh, I, I'm really impressed by your tricep, as you did an extension there. I thought really? you looked very toned. Mm -hmm. and, My uh, husband you know, makes me do uh, YouTube workouts with him every day, so I've been doing that. You guys are getting quarantine shred? Yeah, quarantine shred. It's nice. I love it. You guys, you guys seem to have a phenomenal relationship. Obviously, uh, your husband, the great comedian Moshe Kasher, uh, and uh, oh, look at this. Let's yes. See oh yeah. Or, Oh, in the podcast, yeah. And the, but you guys also started, you did a tour, right? The Endless Honeymoon Tour. Yeah, we have a podcast. It's called The Endless Honeymoon. And we, uh, we did a tour. We did a Netflix show. And we were about to start a big tour. And honestly, as a joke, in January, we like all wore masks on the, on the tour poster. And then <laughs> basically, <laughs> it, it, it just Too soon. Like, and I remember the girl, we went and got pictures taken at the mall and in all of our masks. And she was just like, what are you doing? And <laughs> then all of a sudden it just became this reality. And unfortunately we had to cancel our, our tour and now we're doing the podcast, but we've, you know, the, the podcast, people have really loved it. So now we're doing it twice a week and we have people call in their secrets and I think maybe it's because of the quarantine. People just have so many dark secrets. <laughs> so once a week, we have a secret dump, and we listen to people's deep, dark secrets and make fun of them, sometimes with another comedian. And then also people are calling in and asking for relationship advice, which is what Moshe and I did on our Netflix special. So that's been really fun to see, like, how people are getting through this and what they're thinking. And honestly, I think it's been really hard for people because there's so many different levels of quarantine you know like i think single people have it really hard in a way you know harder than people with in, who are in a couple but then people in a couple are like you know if i have to watch my husband chews nicorette gum all day long and it's just like <laughs> so I, I i just can't take it anymore i don't know how to tell him to not do it he like the other day he had a, he had a popcorn bag and he was just like drinking popcorn dust like <laughs> just the dust from the bag, like the whole movie. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then on top of that, we have a baby. So that's a different level. You know, we get all the benefits of the baby, but also not the benefits of the people who are single, like discovering a new art form or learning how to play the tenor sax or whatever they're doing. You know, I, I like, I follow Seth Rogen and he's always like making these amazing like clay sculptures. And it's like, I, I feel like people without kids are really kind of like living the artistic dream right now. <laughs> right, I'm doing right. a lot of dishes, but in return, <laughs> in exchange, you know, I, I get to be around this little angel that doesn't know who Trump is. So I guess right, right. everyone's got their positives and negatives and I feel very grateful. Of right. course. The formative uh, years of your child, what a treat to get to spend those as opposed to having to be on the road and stuff. You know what I mean? In a way, it's like a silver lining. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I mean, I had a, a nanny and, you know, I would kind of delegate a lot of stuff because I was gone so much and trying to like write comedy and do comedy. And I was acting on a TV show and, you know, just getting to have lunch and putting your kid to bed every night is like, it is very special. Totally. And awesome. exhausting. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I tried Nicorette gum once in Sweden. And um, everyone there is 
heavily addicted to tobacco, but they a lot of them put the the snus, which is like toasted dip. That is disgusting. <laughs> but <laughs> the snus, unlike dip, you don't spit. Oh, you um, don't? No. But doesn't no, it see like cancer in your like gum a in little? In your bit? gums, I think I if you so, do a lot. Yes. But I think I think the snus is a lot less carcinogenic than the true long, you know, the skull stuff. But, well, my, oh yeah, go ahead. Well, you got you got you know these beautiful. We went on some like dates, my friends and I, with some like uh, some Swedish girls, and they were putting tobacco pouches in their lips. We'd never seen. I don't, you know, we'd never seen women do that. And I, I was like, oh, I should try that. And they were like, it's going to be too much for you. We can tell you're a bitch. Um, and so one of them gave me some Nicorette gum to try. And I am not a tobacco person. And chewing a piece of this gum, I was almost passing out. My head was spinning. Yeah, was, yeah, man. Oh, my God. Have you ever tried that? Because Julio's an avid smoker. He's got a problem. <laughs> I quit. And I tried Nicorette it, to quit. It didn't help me. But the fact that everyone just kind of stopped smoking is what helped me. But whatever. We're, we're getting well, off. Well, my the husband, Moshe, calls himself a chain chewer. And <laughs> so he's just like three pieces at a time. And it's been, honestly, it's been two years. So I, I don't really understand. I don't think you're supposed to be like <laughs> amping up the intake as like <laughs> the months and years go by. I, I thought it was more of like, you're supposed to be slowly tapering it down. <laughs> definitely. So he's, he's definitely abusing it. And I got to say, I'm kind of into it too. It does give you a nice little high. Yeah. Nice little uh, boost. I'm, I wonder if it's, you know, the, the, the benefits for his jawline. Maybe he's like uh, getting a oh. nice toning there. No, that's what he said. The, the, and he said this is starting to happen to him. The way you know you're overdoing it is your jaw starts like locking and hurting. And, and I was like, has that started happening to you? And he's like, a little. Hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I don't know what we're going to get him on. Love it. <laughs> Maybe I'll finally have to let him have a three-way. Wow. wow. There what a go. what a trade off that I mean. You heard it here first, want, folks. He, he's sober. I don't want him drinking. I don't want him smoking pot. Mm. I don't want him vaping. Yeah. What else got, is there? Banging other him. chicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Natasha, Natasha, I saw you at uh, the comedy store about maybe six months ago, maybe eight months ago. I don't even know when it was. Um, you. you crushed. Yeah, you were in the main room. Um, and Holmes, uh, Sam Yo, is that, I think, was it on, on the show? Some other people. Michael Yo? Michael Yo, sorry. sorry. Sam Yo is like, I think, my one of my Peloton instructors. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, you were fantastic. And um, on your Wikipedia page, <laughs> it says that, uh, you know, one of the things they talk about is the outfits that you choose for stand up and you dress. It so does? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It has, it has an interesting quote about how, like, it's part of your kind of character. I don't know if, you know. Well, yeah, you know, for, for me, I always kind of dressed a little differently. And then when I, you know, growing up, I was always wearing vintage clothes and cutting them up and like platform shoes. And I'd kind of always have my own style. But then when I started stand up, my first, you know, the first few months in, I was like, I don't want to draw attention to myself <laughs> in case I bomb. I don't want to be bombing in like a riding hat and like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I would kind of like underplay it. But I think my philosophy in general was always, you know, I, I think I read a quote once. Someone said, if you dress like the audience, you become one of them or something. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I should always like be like a clear delineation, like, you know, because I just kind of like this throwback energy of like performance and razzle dazzle. Um, it's just what inspired me to do stand up. And so I slowly, I think about a year into comedy, maybe two years, I started like playing around with like dressing a little more glamorously. And then it kind of had this like gift where it's like, oh, people aren't as offended because I'm like, I'm dressed kind of as a character. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I felt like I could almost get away with being a little meaner and, you know, a little edgier. And, and that's kind of why I, but, but you know, I, I just always 
loved dressing up and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's oh, really yeah. interesting. That like that just like kind of blew my mind a little bit, especially the comment about if you dress like them. But there is something you want. You, but I get what you're saying because you want to disconnect yourself a little bit, and for many reasons, including the fact that, like you said, you can get away with much more as long as you like. If you put yourself on the pedestal, the people will respect that type of thing. But you also, know I mean? you know, people love being one of the they love when people I mean that's what reality tv is that's like our obsession with casualness now I mean that's it's definitely not how everyone sees it I'm just saying right. like that that was just my personal approach I don't think it's bad that you guys like didn't dress up for this interview <laughs> <laughs> thank you I appreciate well it. really quick uh I have a very different mentality because we both do stand up you know we're way below you but uh in new york i find that i will dress down for shows um because i don't want people i certainly mostly the other comedians to think like who's this guy who's wearing a button-down shirt like who the hell does he think he is i think it's also personal i mean your influences probably aren't diana ross live in central park like right. he would literally like sing a song pose and then someone would come and like change her outfit while she was just like standing like this you know like yeah. i just think you know that that just always appealed to me but you know it's it's I, I think stand up is interesting because you're you know you got to find your way of being funny and there's it's 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 so open you can you know there's so many possibilities and i think the best way is when it's organic to who you are Totally. Absolutely. And with that said, uh, let's, uh, w you know, we're, we're here to, to promote your, your new show coming out on Netflix. Uh, tell us about it. Are you, you know, I'm, we're so excited to see it. Oh, wait, let me move this in case they want to put. Okay, have that not be, <laughs> let's not cross the streams here. Um, I, uh, the new show is called Hoops and it's an amazing cast. It's an animated show um, about, it, it's a, it's a, Jake Johnson plays a kid's basketball coach and he is extremely inappropriate and very bad at his job. And it's a pretty dirty show. I would say one of the edgiest shows I've been a part of, especially since it's animated. And I get to play Shannon, Jake's ex-wife. Um, we still kind of have a thing for each other. Him, ha He has a thing for me more than I do him, but I still kind of use him for things. And you know those people who you just can't white get out of your life <laughs> we kind of have that relationship and the cast is amazing ron funches mm -hmm. rob riggle cleo king ad miles uh damon wayans came like there's just so many great guest stars it it's just to be able to act with all of these comedians you know ever since i started comedy i remember i, I came to la as an actress and i went to like a few auditions and I was just like so turned off by everything. And I was like, maybe this isn't for me. And then I remember I went to like a comedian, a thing where it was all comedians. And like, we had so much fun in the waiting room and I was talking to people and I was like, who are these people? This is who I want to be around, not like actors. And so I just feel so lucky whenever I get to be in a show, nothing against actors, but like, you know, where everyone is primarily a, a, a comedian you know even if they don't do stand-up they're writing comedy they're like thinking comedy they're you know they're they're creators and and i i really that's my favorite awesome, awesome. sounds so great that'll be on Let's netflix uh we're really excited to see it and uh you can also of course check out her podcast uh with her husband moshe kasher endless honeymoon um that's natasha legero thank you so much for joining us we had a blast oh you guys are cool thank you see you in thank new you. york hopefully someday Love hope it. so Okay. All right. Bye. 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 If you like that video, check out our channel where we have way more videos. Fucking, I just don't know how to do this. This is unbelievable. If you like that video, we have way more videos on our channel. Please like and subscribe. Turn on notifications if you want to know when there are new ones. Um, but if not, check them out and we appreciate it. Oops.